Our first speaker will be Professor John D. Caputo. He's the Thomas J. Watson Professor of Religious, uh, Religion Emeritus at Syracuse University and the David R. Cook Professor of Philosophy Emeritus at Villanova. He has a, been a visiting professor at the New School for Social Research, a distinguished adjunct professor at Fordham. He's considered to be a major figure in postmodern Christianity. Dr. Caputo is also considered to be the founder of a theological movement known as Weak Theology. He is largely responsible for the resurgence, of, resurgence in the United States of scholarly interest in Jacques Derrida. Uh, Dr. Caputo's most recent books include The Folly of God, A Theology of the Unconditional, Hoping Against Hope, Confessions of a Postmodern Pilgrim, and It Spooks, Living in Response to an Unheard of Call. Dr. Caputo received his B.A. at, La at LaSalle University, his M.A. at Villanova, and his Ph.D. at Bryn Mawr. Dr. Caputo. Thank you very much, Jim, for your kind uh, introduction and for your kind invitation to come to back to B Brigham Young. I've been here a couple of times and always enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, I appreciate uh, the, the beauty of the place, as, as uh, you were saying. It's a magnificent setting. And um, I had hoped to spend some more time out here this week, but family duties uh, prevented it. So um, the title of my talk is Postmodern, Postsecular, Postreligious. Um, let me begin with uh, two uh, f fairly well-known statements by fairly well-known postmodern philosophers uh, about religion. The first is by uh, Gianni Vattimo, a uh, Italian, you can tell from the inflection, a, an Italian uh, postmodern philosopher who um, wrote, uh, has in the, his, the sort of the later phase of his work gotten more and more interested in religion. He grew up as a, uh, a very devout daily mass, <coughs> daily mass and Holy Communion, uh, Italian, Catholic, but he was gay. So he fell into some um, disagreement with the, the Vatican, um, to which he was uh, perilously close living in Italy. Um, and uh, went off as a, f launched a uh, philosophical career as a major postmodern philosopher. But in his later work, he came back to Christianity, to, to a certain Catholicism, let's say, to a certain postmodern Christianity. And uh, when he was asked one day whether he believed, uh, still believed, he said, I, I believe that I believe. I believe that I believe. So he had a certain belief in belief, a certain or rather uncertain belief. He didn't believe, um, period. But then again, he didn't disbelieve. He believed and he didn't. He disbelieved and he didn't. The other uh, postmodern philosopher uh, was Jacques Derrida, who uh, wrote a, an absolutely amazing um, sort of postmodern counterpart to Augustine's Confessions um, called Circumfessions, the, the cut of circumcision. He's Jewish, right? Mary was raised Jewish the cut of circumcision in Latin, circumcision, not the Hebrew word, and confession. And in the middle of this book, he says, I quite rightly pass for an atheist. Although the religion that even my mother doesn't but, but no one knows about my religion, even my mother who should have known. No, no one knows about this religion, and, and consequently, I am read less and less well. I was on a plane 30,000 feet up in the air uh, in the days before 9-11 when I first read that. And my first instinct was to run up to the cockpit and say, stop the plane. 
I got to get off. I need, a I need a computer. I have to write a book about Derrida's religion. And we had many times over the years had occasion to have Jacques Derrida come to Villanova, and he's come to, we're, going, we're all going off to uh, this kind of philosophy uh, conference tomorrow in Salt Lake City. Um, and uh, on occasions that I had, was at a public forum, and I would say to him, why don't you just say, I am an atheist. Je suis, c'est moi. And he says, uh, well, uh, because uh, I, I do know. Maybe uh, I'm not, a, not an atheist. He says, that is what they say. Uh, maybe they're right, but I don't know. There are, there are, he says, too many voices inside him. And they give each other no rest for him to say, I am. Je suis. To consolidate his being into that kind of uh, absolute uh, monolithic, unambiguous uh, identification. In, in much the same way that Kierkegaard would never say, or Kierkegaard's uh, pseudonyms would never say, I am a Christian, they would say. I am trying to become one. And a good, good friend of uh, all of ours named Harold Westfall once said that he, when someone asked him who didn't know him very well, said, are you a Christian? He said, I, I rightly pass for one. <laughs> and that was exactly the right answer to give. So this is a very exquisitely postmodern posture. I, I am and I am not, I am not, but then again, I am in a certain way. I believe something. I don't believe nothing. I believe something I know not what. Now, why so exquisitely postmodern? Because, let me give you a um, recklessly simplified history of the, this word. Pre-modern, modern, postmodern. In, in pre-modernity, the, the word atheism had virtually no currency. I'm not even sure it was actually coined uh, before modernity. But, but it had no currency because it had virtually no role to, to play. Uh, it, it was a kind of uh, foil. The, the fool says in his heart, I don't believe in God. There is no God. The, the background belief, the, the, the background structure of the culture was one of belief. And the, 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 what, what intellectuals did, what the professors did, was try to articulate that belief and clarify that be, belief and, and, and debate the competing implications of that belief. But, but the belief was the background structure. The great monotheisms of the great, the great masters in the Middle Ages. Um, in Greek philosophy, there was a, was a belief in order, cosmos, God. Mod modernity was, was the time in which people began to um, question this right? and raise uh, systematically, put, put into systematic doubt uh, our inherited beliefs. Even if we believe, still believe them, they would, as Descartes said, methodologically doubt it in order to clarify what was uh, certain and what was uncertain about it. I mean, once somebody said the Earth is actually moving, spinning on its axis and rotating around the sun, it's not still. After that, people began to say, well, what in heaven's name, literally, <laughs> what under the heavens, can we possibly still believe? What's certain and what's not after? If, if, if this terra firma is moving, what next? What's for sure? What's certain? And so the modern epic is an epic of rightful suspicion. And it brought us modern civil liber liberties. And it brought us modern science. So you, you don't, in general, want to come out flatly against modernity. It's, it, it's, it's in general, not a good idea. 
Yeah, I mean, just for example, you know, would you really like to go through your next medical procedure without anesthesia? So in general, we, we're not, the postmodern doesn't mean against modern. Modernity is a period of, of critical inquiry, of raising critical questions, uh, 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 suspicion. And to do that, it, be, it, it became very rigid about categories. It started making distinctions between what, what's subjective and what's objective, right? What's rational and what's irrational? What's a matter of reason and what's a matter of faith? What's purely private and what's public? Now, you notice how religion has a tendency there to fall on one side of the ledger. It tends to be on the side of the subjective, emotive, irrational, private, if you were to divide things like that. And so the, the church condemned Descartes even though he proved the existence three times in one book. Why? because they had a good nose for trouble. They knew that there was something cooking here that made them profoundly unhappy, that was eventually going to cause trouble. And it was the spirit of critical inquiry. And, and, and the, 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 the thing that was being set afoot. I mean, they should have followed Nicholas of Cusa, not, not, not Descartes, but they followed they, they, uh, they didn't do that either. So they just took this sort of anti-rationalist uh, stand. It was bound to end in adding to that list. We, we were bound to add the distinction between theism and atheism. It was bound to happen that th theism would end up on the side of the subjective, private, emotive, faith-bound side. And scientific, rational, atheistic materialism was bound to end up on the upper side of that binary pair. Post, and so religion, religion took a thumping in modernity. Postmoderns, not thinking about religion, were profoundly uh, uh, wary of what was going on in modernity. They were, they were profoundly wary of these binary divisions. They were profoundly wary of, of, of a, a rigorous distinction between subjective and objective and between rational and irrational. And they, and, and they were on the lookout for um, the, a more, something prior to that. Now, if you were a modernist and you looked at what I was saying about Badimo and Derrida, you would say, we've got, a, we've got a box for that. We've got a category for that. It's called agnosticism. There are three possible positions. Theism, atheism, agnosticism. You affirm the proposition, you deny the proposition, or you, you suspend judgment about the proposition. Right? Modernity never misses an opportunity to miss an opportunity. There's something profoundly interesting, supple, subtle, elusive, evasive, and difficult to put your hands on and get your head around in what Varibo and Derrida are saying. It doesn't so much have to do with beliefs about beings, propositions, but about a kind of pre-propositional core of experience, which doesn't yield to these categories and doesn't fit in these boxes. And now, for the most part, the, when postmoderns were talking about that, they weren't thinking about religion. But as a matter of fact, what they were saying, and they were thinking about, for example, works of art or ethics. But it works quite exquisitely for religion, because religion doesn't fit into those boxes either. Religion is also, uh, is also interestingly post, or, or is, is, is an interesting subject matter for the postmodern. Why? Because postmoderns were, were, were suspicious of this hard line dogmatic ism, ism, 
Too many isms. Too much dogmatism. They were suspicious of overarching, ahistorical, reductionistic accounts of everything. And all hell broke loose in postmodernism after World War II, in uh, post-war continental philosophy, when the great isms, the great totalitarian isms, had cost, what, 60 million lives? So postmodernism is not an ism, which is why they all reject the word. But postmodern is a suspicious, a suspicion of these big theories, be they including atheistic materialistic theories. Now that's not what they were thinking about, but that's where it ended up. Postmodernism is post, I'm going to say, post-secular because it, redact, it rejects dogmatic, atheistic views as overarching, ahistorical, overreaching claims. It also rejects, it's also post-religious because it, oh, it rejects overarching, too powerful claims about the, the, that have an account of the final and ultimate nature of things. It's against any form of biblical inerrantism. It's against any, any kind of uh, institutional infallibleism. <clears throat> and it looks upon religi religion as a, what Wittgenstein called a form, a form of life, or what Heidegger called a mode of being in the world. It's more interested in the deep structure of a certain kind of faith than in proposition, cor correct propositions, correct views, orthodoxe. Now, one other final distinction I need to introduce is the distinction between, between the secular and the secular and secularism. Postmodernism is post secular in the sense of post secularism. What's the difference between secular and secularism? Secular means the, a public order where there is no religious hegemony. It means the separation of, chess, ch of state and, and church. It means the, the plurality of opinions. The secular order is an open-ended, polyvocal, polymorphic order of diverse sorts of people saying diverse sorts of things who, who have the right to, th to ask any question. Presumably nobody wants to be post that. Secularism is a normative claim. It's the, it's the modernist claim that religious claims are emotive, subjective, private fantasies. So postmodern is post-secular Ism, but it's not post-secular. That's why the word postmodern doesn't mean anti-modern. It doesn't mean uh, making war on modernity. It means passing through modernity, coming out the other end, and continuing mo modernity by another means. It doesn't want to be pre-modern. Trust me, you don't want to be pre-modern. It, it doesn't want to repeat the 19th century. If you like the 19th century, go to the movies. Right? We, we already had one. There are lovely costume dramas out there. If you want to revisit the 19th century, be my guest. The new atheists, nothing new about it. Straight out 19th century reductionistic materialism. Postmodernism is post that. All right, now, where am I with time? I'm probably right out of time. <laughs> You're within a couple of minutes. <laughs> That was the first page. <laughs> that's, why I, that's why I wanted to get started with it. All right. And let me give you a reading, a little, te little text. We're going to read a text from one of my favorite, we now call him postmodern uh, theologians named Paul Tillich. Tillich says, God is no object for us as subjects. 
he, it was 1946, give him a break. He's, he's still calling God he. He is always that which precedes this division. But on the other hand, we speak about him and we act upon him and we cannot avoid it because everything which becomes real to us enters the subject-object correlation. Out of this paradoxical situation, the half-blasphemous and mythological concept of the existence of God has arisen. And so have the abortive attempts to prove the existence of this object. To such a concept and to such attempts, atheism is the right religious and theological reply. It's one of my favorite quotes of 20th century theologians. One of my favorite quotes, period. Atheism is the right religious and theological reply. What? What's that mean? Atheism is the beginning of theology for Tillich, not the, not the end. It's got a, there's an antecedent for what Tillich is saying in the mystical tradition. So you have someone like Meister Eckhart saying, I pray God to rid me of God, meaning that everything that the theologians say about God is, um, as St. Thomas Aquinas said, dust, straw, secret palaga, Thomas said, compared to God. So there's a mystical atheism, which is a, a very profound uh, inscribing a zone of respect upon God, around God, so that God is not, uh, we don't try to lay hands on, on God. The Tillich quotes that, but it's not all that he's interested in. What he's, what he's interested in is moving on beyond the idea of God as what he calls mythological and uh, blasphemous. Why mythological? Mythological meaning you pers personify God into a being, a person with whom you can have a conversation, a, a, a multilingual being who knows all the languages, who can speak to anybody who is omniscient and omniscient and baffles us when he, who, who can come to our rescue when we need him and baffles us when he, he doesn't. All those things he thinks are mytho. He thinks that's the way we have to sort of personify God in our imagination. But they are that, personifications. Half blasphemous. Why does he call that view half blasphemous? Because it reduces God to something uh, less than God is. God is not a being, he says, but God is the ground of being. God is not an entity, not the very highest entity of all, no matter how many supers you put in front of him, of, of his name, God's not that. God is the ground from which all things emerge and the into which they return, the underlying deep structure of things. Not pantheism, but panentheism, God in all, all in God. So it does have a kind of mystical quality. And that shows up, he says, in what he calls the unconditional. What is religion for him? It is a being seized by something of unconditional power, value, worth, depth, affirming something of unconditional value. And that can happen anywhere, not just in religious talk about God. It happens in art. It happens in science. It happens in our daily lives. It happens in ethical and political action. It's the deep structure in things. And the fact that we've set aside religion as a separate category is a modernist construction. It's one of the boxes of modernity. It's actually a way to contain it and limit the, limit the damage that it does. But religion, there are, there, there are no temples in the heavenly Jerusalem because God is all in all. Where am I now? You pass it, you're over time. Okay. Um, so for, I'll, I'll wrap it up then with this. For, for Tillich, 
taking Tillich as a characteristically postmodern philosopher, Tillich is giving a name to this thing that Vadimo and Derrida were talking about at the beginning when they said they believe something, but they don't know what they believe. I, I'm an atheist, but I'm, I, I'm not sure I'm an atheist. Why? Because of something else afoot, something else un underfoot, something deeper, more uh, intractable, more unnameable that they're um, resonating with. Something which both Derrida and uh, Tillich end up calling the unconditional. And religion, postmodern religion, has to do with that. All right, that should be enough for some questions later on, so we can, we can continue this uh, in the discussion.